I'm in a zone three and I'm about to completely change your perspective on fall gardening. So here's the thing, when we are in colder climates like Canada or Northern US, spaces in Europe, we usually think that this time of year is the time of year when we pack things in. Things are ready to harvest and a lot of things are beginning to set seed and get a little scraggly and ugly looking, which is completely normal. But there's a few things to consider here. We can continue the growing process, whether it's for soil nutrition, which we'll talk about, or if it's for our bellies, which we will also talk about. We can utilize mother nature actually as a way to refrigerate a lot of produce shockingly enough, well into the winter months. And then we also have the fact that frost is mother nature's seasoning salt. And I will explain that as well, but it's no joke. So today's video, we are going to look at exactly how to fall garden in a cooler climate. So let's get into it. Frost actually triggers the plant into storing or making more sugar. Here's why fall gardening works so well in our cold climate and something that people in warm climates will never be able to experience. And that is the fact that shorter days and cooler temperatures results in a plant that is very happy to stockpile a ton of sugar. For example, carrots and beets. When it gets to be about minus two degrees Celsius, which is this many degrees Fahrenheit, things get sweet, very nummy. So part of a fall garden is actually to leave some plants in place. You don't even have to cover them. You just leave them in place and then let that frost hit it before harvesting. Now we don't wanna leave them in for too long. We need to harvest them kind of around that minus two degrees Celsius. They can go to minus two a few times but eventually you wanna harvest them so they don't turn into mush. And this rule applies to all things in ground. Beets, carrots, radishes, turnips, rutabaga, literally anything in ground. Kale is another one that actually becomes incredibly sweet in the fall or in the cooler months. If you did not know, kale can go down to minus 10 degrees Celsius without cover. And things like Blue Max, for example, can go down to minus 18 degrees Celsius. Again, with no cover. So those are extreme ends of the kale spectrum. If you've ever had kale and thought it is flavorless, it is gross, it is no good, try a kale grown in the fall that has had that frost hitting it and you will be shocked. The texture is different, the flavor is different, everything is different. Not to mention, you don't have things like aphids and worms and bugs to deal with at all because they can't survive the cold. Another one, oddly enough, is spinach. So spinach is one where you can get mini spinach, you can get giant spinach leaves. And this one in particular is unique in the sense that I've had it over winter under just snow. So I've actually pulled snow back from the garden and seen my spinach still completely fine. Firm leaves, ready to grow, hunky-dory. That's not just the end, the benefits continue. So before we get into the process of setting up the fall garden, which I'll show you how to do here shortly, we want to first take a look at the photo period that is fall and why this is unique and how we have to play into it, particularly in this Northern hemisphere where our days are beginning to become shorter. Beginning of September, September 1st-ish, in and around now, you only have about 13 hours of sunlight. By the end of September, we're working with around 11 hours of sunlight. And by the time we hit mid-October, we're down to eight or nine hours of sunlight. It continues to go down. And this is important because once we get below 10 hours of sunlight, we end up with plants that stop growing. What this is called is it's called the Persephone period. And while it sounds romantic, it really isn't because what happens is the plants don't die, but they also don't grow. They kind of just slow down. And the beauty here is that we can now use mother nature as our refrigerator. So this is when we allow the plants to go into a storage mode, which is fine. We can leave them there. We can leave them planted. They will live and still uptake water and nutrients and be happy and healthy in the ground compared to in your refrigerator. So long as we can keep them away from being completely obliterated by frost, we don't have to water them. We don't have to do 
much of anything at all. But with that being said, if we know the end of October is where the plants go into the Persephone period or the storage mode and come out of that growth mode, we have to backdate our crops from October 31st to now. So I don't know when you're watching this video, but what you want to do is you want to sit down with a piece of paper and you want to figure out how many days you have left until the end of October hits. You don't care about temperatures, nothing. All we care about is total time. So right now I'm in the last week of August, which means I have somewhere around 60 to 70 days of viable hours of sun prior to when the plants would go into the storage mode. Now, the exception to this rule is if we only want to do it for soil health and in the form of a cover crop. So cover crops can help with making a soil less compact. It can help with snow capture. It can help with reducing erosion. So there's a number of different reasons why you would want to use this. And the types of plants you could utilize for this could include buckwheat, alfalfa, peas, radishes, the list is truly endless and I've done a whole video on what type of cover crop you want to use based on what your goals are with your soil. And if that is the case, we don't care about the days to harvest because all we care about is foliage growth, which will happen in that 60 day period regardless. It just won't flower and you won't necessarily get a harvest within that time. So just keep that in the back of your head. When it comes to covers and fall gardening, we usually think they are absolutely necessary. We'll go over kind of different types of covers and ways you can actually just use stuff around the house to increase the ability for those covers to do their job. But here's something to think about. If you are planting plants like the Blue Max, for example, kale, and it's able to withstand these cool temperatures, minus 18 in that case, then we don't actually need cover because it will still grow so long as it's getting those hours of light. Now, obviously the exception to this is if it does get cooler than the normal range that that plant should be in, then you would want to put the covers on top. So one really easy way to organize this is to have beds or sections that have very specific tolerances when it comes to temperature. So if you have a row or section of blue max and that minus 18 then you know that doesn't have to be covered at all so long as it's above minus 18. now another section could go down to only minus five and then you know that section has to be covered in the event it goes below minus five now the only other exception to this rule would be if you intend to store said plants outdoors while they're in storage mode so if you intend to use mother earth as your refrigerator then you will definitely need cover to get them from october into when you are completely done harvesting but say you have no intention of actually using mother earth as your refrigerator well then you don't need cover at all because for some of you it doesn't actually get that cold and if you strategically pick which fall crops to go with, you actually are probably gonna be just fine. Here's the temperature ranges we need to look at. And this is completely based on a ton of research I've done, whether it's personal experience and or people who have actually taken the time to put a min-max thermometer into these scenarios to kind of see where they land. And I would say from personal experience, it's probably pretty darn close. So number one is a floating row cover, which is just that light kind of fleece looking stuff. And that can protect things from minus two degrees Celsius down to minus four degrees Celsius. And it's great for lettuces, spinaches, and radishes. Now here's the thing, we would want to remove that fleece top in the event that it is daytime is warmer. If the nighttime's the only time where it's getting cool, then we would actually cover it back up because so long as we have growth mode light hours, we do want to leave that whole thing exposed to as much light as possible. Now, if your daytime times are getting low, even in growth lighting periods, we want to keep them covered because obviously we don't want them to get frostbitten. And again, that's only if, for example, lettuce, minus two to minus four degrees is too cold for these guys to do well in. If you have something that can go past that minus two to four degrees, you don't have to worry about light fleece. 
doesn't matter and it's probably completely useless to you when things do begin to get cooler the next one is a heavier row cover this is like a thicker fleece this i uh, you could just use your blanket from in the house and that can go from minus five to minus six degrees celsius same rule applies. So if we're in growth mode and we're still getting lots of nice big hours of light, we wanna pull that fleece off during the day and only put it on at night unless the daytime is cold and day to day it could change. Now the low tunnel poly hoops. So these are the ones that are relatively close to the canopy. These can go down to minus five degrees Celsius. It is poly, so it's plastic and you can see through it, meaning we don't have to remove it during the day and we can actually allow things to heat up pretty nicely during the day, so long as we don't cook anything. So if it gets above 10 degrees Celsius ambiently, we do wanna pull it off because we don't wanna cook anything. But if it stays low, then we can actually just leave it in place day and night. Now, if we want to add a little bit of extra insulation, say we're getting down to like minus 10 and the plant doesn't do well in that, we can throw a heavy fleece or a light fleece over top of the poly tunnel at night. And that gives us two to three degrees Celsius more protection, which can bring us down to minus seven to minus eight degrees Celsius. Next up, we have our classic cold frames, and this means it has either a glass or a plastic wood. So it can have sides that are glass and plastic, or it can have sides that are wood. That does not matter. And they're not insulated, like it's nothing fancy. If you have insulation and something really heavy duty you made, then that is the exception. This is just like your normal cold frame box, assuming that the top for sure is ENC into it. So that's kind of the key there. So that can get us down to like minus 10 degrees Celsius. And then of course we can fleece that plant inside. So we wouldn't fleece necessarily the outside of the cold frame, but we would fleece is inside the cold frame. And so in the event that things get even cooler, we want to add that two to three degree buffer. We pop it open, we put the fleece inside, we put it back down and we're ready to go. The next option is for people who are super hardcore and that is the high tunnel option. So high tunnels are typically something you can walk through. They're higher tunnels. And the idea here is that it is poly. Now that poly obviously is going to capture sunlight, but inside of that, we have an added layer of protection. We can then poly in a low tunnel, the plants inside of there. We can cold frame the plants inside of there, or we can fleece the plants inside of there. And so when we do this, if we decide to go cold frame or small poly inside of big poly, we can add five degrees Celsius to that temperature. If we go the fleece route, we still end up around that two to three. Now, the reason for that is because we have a lot of ambient air. And so unless that ambient air is heated in some way, it really doesn't benefit us. So you can run heaters, obviously, in some of those larger scenarios. Is it worth it? that's totally up to you, I don't know. If it's growth phase period, in my opinion, it could be worth it. If it is in storage mode, I probably just harvest it and call it a day. So for me personally, I am going to be doing kale and I'm going to be doing some Swiss char colored greens. Now these guys I have started off a little bit earlier, so I probably started them like three-ish weeks ago. And as you will notice, they're kind of a little bit bigger. So I started growth mode a little earlier. And so the reason for that being, I intend to kind of put them into a storage state a little bit sooner. I'm growing these in an area that struggles to get sun to say the least. And so because of that, my growth mode very likely is going to be stunted or pulled back a heck of a lot sooner than the rest of my space. You can utilize things like the old school Christmas lights will help you get a little bit more heat. You can utilize things like sheep's wool or mulches in and around the plants to help if you go into that storage mode. Not so much the growth mode, we wanna to try to keep as much light on those plants as possible. But if we're going to storage mode, we can pile in different types of fabrics and hopes of keeping things nice. So, Geek Crew, let me know if you're fall gardening and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!